Ganga Brahmaputra Basin, the subtropical region of the world. Location. Look at the map. Can you see the red outline and the blue outline on the map? On the first map. Yeah, all that area is showing the Ganga Brahmaputra Basin. The Ganga Brahmaputra Basin is one of the world's largest river basins. It is situated between 22 degree north and 30 degree north latitudes. It stretches from Punjab in the west to Assam in the east. A part of it also lies in Bangladesh. There's one more map, the small one. And all that green area, that is the Ganga Brahmaputra Basin. The northern plains are about 2,400 kilometers in length. The width varies from 150 to 300 kilometers. The plains of the Ganga and Brahmaputra, the mountains and the foothills of the Himalayas and the Sundarban Delta are the main features of this basin. Can you see a picture of the Himalayas? Drainage system. This basin is drained by rivers Ganga, Brahmaputra and their tributaries. Look at the first picture. Isn't it beautiful? That is the Brahmaputra. The Ghagra, Son, Yamuna, Gandak and Kosi are the tributaries of the river Ganga. Lohit, Dhansiri and Dibang are the tributaries of the river Brahmaputra. Look at the second picture. That's a picture of the river Ganga. Climate The Ganga Brahmaputra Basin experiences the monsoon type of climate. Hot summers and cold winters. Okay, look at all those warm clothes that you'll need in winter. It experiences rainfall from mid-June to mid-September. So mid-June to mid-September is rainy season in this basin, in the Ganga Brahmaputra Basin. Soil. This basin is drained by many Himalayan rivers. Rivers like Ganga and Brahmaputra have formed the northern plains of India. This plain has a thick cover of alluvium. It has very fertile alluvial soil. Agriculture is the main occupation of the people of the Ganga Brahmaputra Basin. Their main occupation is farming, agriculture. Can you see a farmer there? He's watering the plants. Natural Vegetation In the early times, this region was a dense forest. It was the habitat of many wild animals. This region has the tropical deciduous forests. Teak, sal, people are the main trees of these forests. Can you see those trees? The picture of those trees? Teak, sal, people. And the next one. Look at the next picture. That's thick bamboo groves are common in the Brahmaputra Basin. In the Delta region, the tidal forests called the Sundarbans are found. Can you see the Sundarbans in the picture? In Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, 
Sikkim and Uttarakhand, the coniferous trees like deoda, pine and fir are found. Can you see the coniferous trees in the pictures? A picture of the deoda tree, pine tree, fir tree. Don't they look nice? Wildlife Langoas, leopards, elephants, tigers, deers, monkeys are the main animals of this basin. Can you see the picture of a langua? The Sundarbans are famous for the Bengal tiger as well as crocodiles and alligators. Can you see the picture of the Bengal tiger? In the Sundarban, in Assam, one-horned rhinoceros is found. Look at the picture. The delta and the coastal regions are rich in a variety of aquatic animals and fish. And these are some fish that are found in this region. Katla, can you see it in the picture? Hilsa and Rohu. Kaziranga, Manas in Assam, Sariska in Rajasthan and Banbasa in Uttarakhand are the main wildlife sanctuaries of this region. Can you see the picture of all these places? Manas Wildlife Sanctuary, Sariska, Kaziranga. Farming or Agricultural activities. Agriculture is the main occupation of the people living in the northern plains of India. These are some crops that they grow here on a large scale. Let's look at them. First, paddy. That is rice. That's where you get your rice from. Wheat. Wheat is what you use to make chapati or roti. Maize. Maize is corn. Don't you like corn? Here's a picture of corn. Sugarcane. Sugarcane is where you get your sugar from. Gram. It includes chole, dal. Chole is known as chickpea in English. Then cotton. That's where you, that's what you use to make clothes. Cotton clothes. Subsistence farming is very common in this region. What is subsistence farming? It means to grow crops for yourself, not to sell to others, but for yourself. In Bihar and Assam, silk worms are reared to produce good quality silk. Look at the silk worms in the picture, the white silk worms. And they are used, they are reared to produce good quality silk. Look at the silk material in the, in the picture. The, the nice pink, the light pink. So soft. I love silk. Let's look at some of the commercial crops that are grown in this region. Commercial crops means they grow these things to sell them. Jute. Look at the jute leaf and what do you get? Look at the jute thread. Oh, it's a jute rope. Tea. Look at the tea leaves. Chai. Yeah. Tea leaves are used to make tea. The drink. Oil seeds. They grow seeds that produce oil like groundnuts. Sunflower. What oil does your mother use in the kitchen? Sugarcane. Big farms have been established to grow rice on a large scale in the recent years. Mineral wealth. This region is rich in minerals, especially iron ore and coal. Can you see the pictures? 
Mineral resources are mainly concentrated in states like Bihar, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand. Iron ore, coal, manganese, mica are the most significant minerals found in this region. Look at the pictures. Transport and Communication All four modes of transport Roadways, Railways, Waterways and Airways are well developed in these regions and they are also in demand for the movement of cargo. So people use these modes of transport to travel from one place to the other and also to transport their goods. This region also has a high level of industrial development, agricultural and mining activities. Look at the pictures of a factory, of an industry, mining, waterways and pipelines are more developed in this region than anywhere else in India. Kolkata is an important international port. It lies on the banks of the river Hooghly. Look at the Kolkata Inter International Port. The Ganga Brahmaputra Basin, the subtropical region, is a great tourist attraction. Large number of monuments, ancient structures, Mughal gardens, temples, mosques and pilgrimage centers are found here. There's a picture of a few temples. The first picture. A few temples in this region. Millions of Hindu devotees visit Allahabad, which is situated on the confluence of River Ganga and Yamuna. Look at the picture of Allahabad. Look at the beautiful picture of the Taj Mahal in Agra. It's also found in this region. Tourism is also a source of livelihood for many people in this region. Population It is one of the most densely populated regions in the world. There are many historically as well as politically important towns and cities here. Some of the important cities of this region are Amritsar, Haridwar, Lucknow, Allahabad, Varanasi, Patna, Tezpur, Tezpur, Kolkata. These are some of the important cities. And Delhi, the national capital, also is in this region. Environmental Degradation this region has seen environmental degradation of the worst kind. Crowded settlements. This region is so crowded. And that has led to Jugi Jopris next to high buildings. So there are poor, really bad, you know, small houses where poor people live and then there are these high buildings, fancy buildings where there are lots of rich people. The rich and the poor dwell together in the same area. And this area also lacks basic sanitation facilities. The river is polluted. Sewage and industrial waste flow directly into the river Ganga and Brahmaputra and their tributaries. Can you see the picture of factory waste going straight into the river? 
That is so sad. It's polluting the river. To save the river Ganga, they came up with the Ganga Action Plan many years ago and now it is replaced by a national plan to clean the rivers because they're so polluted. But there are two more problems. First, the population explosion has caused harm to these rivers. Yes, these areas are so densely populated. And second, air pollution has badly affected the region. Example, motor vehicles exhaust release dangerous gases. You know, look at the picture. Can you see the car? Yeah. And the exhaust, it's releasing dangerous gases that pollute the air.